Yeah, thanks a lot for the introduction. Uh, my, my name is Song Li. Uh, I'm a PhD candidate in EC department at Duke University. And uh, yeah, today is my great pleasure to present our work. Um, the title is ERMS, an efficient federal learning framework for hydrogenous mobile clients. This is a joint work with the uh, Alibaba Damo Academy. I also want to thank my excellent collaborators, uh, Jingwei, Peng Cheng, Yu and the Professor Haili and the Professor Yan Chen. So yeah, today I will, you know, first briefly introduce the background and the motivation of this work. And also after that, I will elaborate the details of our design. So following that, I will show you some key evaluation results. Then finally, I will conclude our work. So yeah, you know, I believe everybody here has, uh, you know, smartphones in your pocket, either the iPhone or Android phone. And then many of you may also have, you know, the different the smart devices at home, like a smart camera, smart speaker. Actually, that is, that is exactly the topic I will discuss today. And you know, we are living at the age of the edge computing, the billions of edge devices have been deployed in our daily life, such as the you know, smartphone, robotics, AR, VR headset, autonomous car, et cetera. And those devices has, has been totally changed the way we study, we work, the communicate, and then many other aspects of our, day, our, our daily life. And in addition, the, we will witness the number of connected devices will keep a rapid increasing in the next decades. And you know, those devices and the edge computing, you know, bring us to, to a new age. So the world will shift from the one we, where we have a centralized data to the one where data is everywhere. And along with the distributed data, the intelligence and the data analytics also migrate from the cloud to the edge device, such that the applications and the services can be served with you know, very nice properties, such as the low latency, enhance the privacy, increase the reliability, reduce the communication cost, and the, you know, so on and so forth. So the question is, how can we enable such intelligence on, the, on those edge devices? You know, AI, especially the deep learning techniques, have been, has been applied into many applications and we have witnessed the unprecedented success in many application domains. So the AI, the deep learning, is a very natural choice to process the data on edge devices. And uh, with the help of AI, we can, you know, boost the different applications in our applications cases in the ad network edge, for example, we can, you know, leverage the vision intelligence at the network edge. We can also build up the audio intelligence, for example, like uh, the, you know, the voice recognition, the user authentication and so on and so forth. And, you know, learning is the first step and the most important step in such a process. Uh, in terms of the learning, the device may only hold limited training samples. So that means it may not be sufficient for the device to train a model locally with a desired performance. So the, tr the conventional approach requires devices to upload the data to a central server where a specific machine learning algorithm can be applied to the aggregated data for learning a powerful machine learning model, such as the you know, uh, deep neural networks. And however, as we can see, the such data movement will raise a serious concerns of a privacy leakage. So therefore it's necessary to you know, address the privacy issue in such a centralized setting while enable the learning on those distributed data. Federal learning is proposed to address such a private issue in the centralized setting. And uh, actually, federal learning is a very popular and uh, emerging uh, distributed machine learning paradigm in both academia and the industry. And uh, in general, federal learning enables uh, massive devices to learn a shared, to learn a shared model without sharing the data. And uh, in the federal learning, each device will learn a local model using the local data and then exchange the local model updates with the central server at some frequency. But you know, the server will perform the aggregation over the local model updates and then update the global model accordingly. After that, the new global model will be sent back to each device for continuous training. But at the end, you know, 
other devices will learn or share the model that can, you know, to, to handle different tasks. And, but in practice, considering the million scale and the billion scale of devices in such a federal learning system, it's impractical to get all the devices involved in the training process. So usually the existing method, you know, usually just randomly sample a subset of devices to participate in the training process in each communication round. And those devices will randomly sample a mini batch from the local data. And then apply the you know some specific uh, uh, optimization algorithm to to compute the local updates. Then the device will you know transmit the local updates to the server. The server will perform the aggregation over the local updates and then update the global model accordingly. So finally, the server will send the you know updated global model back to each device for continuous training. So as we can see here, so only the local model updates are communicated between the device and the server. So the privacy concern caused by the data up uploading in the centralized setting can be somehow mitigated. So, so far the further learning sounds a very good solution to enable the learning on the edge device. So however, there are several critical challenges when applying the further learning in practice. So first, the data generated on the edge devices is open heterogeneous. So that means it's really hard to learn a shared global model that can generalize well for all the devices. So personalization becomes necessary for further learning to handle the, you know, the challenges posed by the heterogeneous data. And compared to uh, existing further learning method, so the personalized the further learning enable each device to learn a personalized machine learning model rather than a shared global model. And in addition to the heterogeneous data, communication cost is another key bottleneck. So due to the, you know, the uh, very expensive or limited communication resources for those edge devices. And even though the, uh, the recent um, uh, a uh, study like uh, LG Fed Average has improved the communication efficiency, but you know the improvement is still not significant enough. As we can see, the communication cost is still very is too high to be affordable for the edge devices. And the, in addition to the communication cost, the, the computation cost is another uh, you know critical challenge in Fed learning. So as we know, you know running the deep neural networks on device to you know. For, to perform to, to perform the inference is often resource demanding. However, the most of the edge devices and the IoT devices are you know only uh, uh, very resource constrained. So that means it's necessary to improve the computation efficiency for the inference on device once we have the model and the deploy the model on the device. And uh, you know, um, however, you know only a few work can you know, uh, improve the com communication efficiency and address such a data heterogeneity at the same time. And the more importantly, so not now the existing work to take the computation efficiency into the consideration when designing the uh, federal learning method. So motivated by the, these limitations and the challenges, so um, we designed the ERMS, so very uh, inefficient federal learning uh, framework um, for the heterogeneous mobile clients. So in this, the, the goal of the ERMS is to simultaneously reduce the communication cost, improve computation efficiency for inference on device, and then enable each device to learn a personalized model to mitigate the uh, data heterogeneity. And the, compared to existing further learning method, the key of ERMS is to enable each device to learn a sub-network rather than the, same, the shared dense network. And in that, in that sense, so each device only need to communicate the sub-network with their central server so that we can you know, re significantly reduce the communication cost. And the, at the end, each device will learn a heterogeneous and the structured sparse model that, that can run efficiently on the device. And the heterogeneous architecture of the sub-network represents the personalized information of the local data. So that we can, you know, enable each device to learn a personalized model, and I will give you more uh, more details in later. And uh, you know, to achieve those goals, so we have to address two critical challenges when we design such a system. 
So number one, how to learn subnetworks that can embed the personalized information of the local data while jointly improving communication and the you know, computation efficiency. So number two, how can we, as we know, the subnetworks is a heterogeneous across clients. And the, you know, the subnetworks represent the personalized information of the local data. So when we perform the aggregation on the server, how can we pre preserve such a personalized property of each subnetwork while allowing the clients to share some common knowledge between each other? So to address the first challenge, challenge in our terms, we propose a very you know, simple but a very effective solution. In the local training process on each device, we incorporated the iterative pruning um, on, the, on the device. So in particular, we perform the iterative pruning using the local data. And the, considering the heterogeneous data across different clients, so at the end, so each client will you know, obtain a heterogeneous subnetworks because of the different data distributions. And uh, as we can see, each client only need to you know, share or transmit the subnetwork with the central server. So we can, you know, dramatically reduce the communication cost compared to you know, transmitting the original dense network. And uh, in addition to reducing the communication cost, we also incorporated the structured sparsity regularization when optimizing the local model, local subnetwork. So finally, each client we can each client can learn a structured sparse model that can run efficiently on the device. And uh, to, in terms of the second challenge, we propose a, you know, a specific uh, aggregation strategy on the central server, such that the server can, you know, the aggregation can maximally preserve the personalized information, personalize the property of the subnetworks while, you know, allow the client, the devices to share some common knowledge between each other. So in particular, so the server will only perform the aggregation, you know, over the intersected elements between among those subnetworks while keeping the non-intersected elements um, unchanged. So in that way, we can achieve the personalization while, you know, sharing some common knowledge between each other. And here's a one very simple example. So we have two devices, device I and device J, and we only show one convolutional layer here, and the layer consists of three channels. So the basically the matrix over here represented the you know the, the, the parameters of the sub model sub network, and the color matrix means the corresponding channels has been retained after the structured sparsity pruning. And uh, but the you know the white one with all zeros are prone indicate that you know the corresponding channel has been prone, and as we can see in this particular case, so only the channel one you know between the device I and the device J are intersected. So the third central server will only perform the averaging aggregation of this over this channel, but the channel three on device on device J will not be changed since you know it's not intersected with the corresponding part on the device J. So that's basically the, how the aggregation strategy works on our central server. So next, um, we to demonstrate the, the generality of our, of our method, we apply the ERMS to develop uh, uh, for uh, three uh, mobile uh, AI applications using the benchmarking data set, including the uh, image data and the sensor data. And um, to, you know, more, to make a more comprehensive evaluations, we also compare our method with uh, five, six ba five, five baselines, including the state of our method. And uh, we also build up our own you know, uh, federal learning system, uh, including different types of edge devices, like a Raspberry Pi, Nvidia JSON TX2, JSON Nano, and so on and so forth. And uh, we run the you know, evaluations on the real device. And uh, in addition, we use two set of metrics to evaluate both tra training performance and the runtime performance. First, uh, you know, uh, before we diving into the uh, evaluation result of the performance, uh, here I want to show the the uh, our uh, our evaluation result of the convergence speed. Actually, in our original uh, paper, we provide a theoretical analysis on the convergence speed, and uh, we 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 can we can show our method can offer a faster convergence 
compared to existing method with a very strong theoretical guarantee. And here, um, based in, in this experiment, we can see our method can not only converge uh, significantly faster than baselines, but it can also achieve you know, consistently better performance in terms of the training loss. And uh, in terms of the training performance, you know, we first compare our method with baselines in terms of in the inference accuracy and the communication cost space. So uh, the figure shows the red star represent our proposed method. We can see uh, the our proposed method can achieve uh, you know a large gain in the inference accuracy while achieving um, a significant reduction on the communication cost. And we also evaluate the impact of the different the hyperparameters, including the number of participating devices. As we can see here, with the increasing number of participating devices in each communication round, we can get a slightly better, slightly better performance because we have more data involved in the training process. We also evaluate some other, you know, key, uh, very sensitive hyperparameters like the data samples on each device and the unbalanced rate. Oh, okay. So in addition, we also evaluate the runtime performance on the real device. Here we can see uh, our method can achieve very uh, you know, significant memory footprint reduction, very good, great, uh, great inferences speed up, and uh, you know, we can also um, significantly re uh, save the energy consumptions compared to the uh, baseline method. Actually, those benefits come from the, the, the structure sparsity of the personalized model learned on each device. So yeah. A quick summary, so by uh, applying our proposed method, each device can learn a heterogeneous sub-network rather than the same dense network. And uh, you know, by applying our proposed personalization uh, pre preserving aggregation, so we can you know, maximally preserve the personalization, personalize the property of each sub-network while you know, allowing each device to share some common knowledge. And finally, each device can learn a personalized and a structured sparse model that can jointly improve both communication and the computation efficiency. Yeah. And with that, I want to conclude my talk and uh, I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you.